Tejas, yeah. first of all, absolute pleasure having you here with us on indigomusic.com. Thank you so much, Rohit. Thanks for having me. Now, we play a lot of uh, your songs on air. Uh, one of my favorite is uh, Brave. Uh, Thank you. Uh, and uh, now you are releasing your brand new album. Uh, it's called Outlast on June 3rd. Now, talk mm -hmm. to us about the process behind the creation of this album and how it came together. Brave is an oldie but goodie. And, uh, yeah, but I... <laughs> it's, it's, it's so good that, you know, we still play it and the people still love it, uh, whoever listens to it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, you know, it's been a while since that uh, that song. It's actually the that, that song is like the first song on my first EP, which doesn't even count as an album because it was the, the one before my first like full length album. This is our second, the uh, one which you mentioned, Outlast. It's um, yeah, it's um, an album, you know, typically like all independent artists take like very, very long, you know, amounts of time to kind of finish um, a body of work. Uh, so this is my, um, this this took about two and a half years, I'd say, three years, if you want to include all the writing as well. Uh, but yeah, it took some time to put together, um, you know, did it in equal parts, but, you know, before and after the whole lockdown and everything. So uh, it was challenging, but uh, in ways that I did not expect. So yeah, it, not in the way that people would think that, oh, were you not in the studio, were you not? I mean, that part was fine, it was manageable. There's so much technology that is even allowing this kind of thing to happen. So, uh, but it was other things, you know, just like, just the time involved and, and, you know, figuring out what we wanted to sound like, things like that. Right now, you have released uh, two singles from uh, the album Lead and uh, The Bombay Doors. Now, these yeah. two songs both uh, sound very different from each other. And, uh, you know, these songs are from uh, different albums as well. Do the albums also sound different or is there a particular theme to the album that you have uh, going on there? Uh, great question. Yes. Uh, I, I think typically, like, if anyone's heard, like, even, like, a, a few of my songs, um, they'll know that, you know, they all vastly sound, you know, quite different from each other in terms of like they all inhabit the pop space and and I love pop music. That's what I grew up listening to as well. But uh, I also grew up listening to you know lots of Elvis records and and you know lots of Bon Jovi and lots of like electronica and the '90s. You know, was just full of like we the weird awkward phase of you know uh, dance pop music and, and things like that. But I also love disco and soul. So you'll find like a lot of those influences kind of creep into to most of my work. Um, I do enjoy kind of writing stuff that is different from each other, uh, like the songs, whatever the message of the song requires, that's the that's the space in which I'm going to try and inhabit. Bombay Doors, I mean, like the title suggests, is about Bombay. It's about, uh, you know, a kind of stereotypical, almost chaotic kind of vibe about it. And anybody who lives in a, you know, like a major urban city can relate to that, I think. And, and um and that's why it's kind of chaotic. But then the, the second half of the song is kind of like really lo-fi, which kind of reminds me of, you know, Bombay at night. So I, I try to let the music kind of reflect exactly like conceptually what the songs are about. Lead is about me. It's about my family and, and what legacy I want to kind of leave behind. So it's got a very like hopeful feel to it. But you're right, you know, like there are other songs on this album which are coming out, which are going to sound equally, you know, different and, and, you know, independent from the rest of it. But I think it's when you when you put them all together in context, they, they really start to kind of, have a, a thematic relevance so yeah <laughs> now uh, do you i mean this question is like asking a parent you know which is your favorite kid yeah. but do you have a favorite uh, song uh, from uh, the album and why i yeah you're right it is tough to choose i i yeah. think um, you know it depends also when you're you know when you're in it and you know when you're like working on it on a specific song then you start to love that one a little bit more because you're, that's the one you're working on uh, I don't think I yet have the benefit of hindsight uh, because it's still pretty fresh. We only finished like mixing the album, like maybe um, like mastering the album, maybe a month and a half, two months ago. So it's it's been a it's been a, only a little bit of time. But I think I'd, I <laughs> right now I like a song called Figure Eight. Um, it's very different from what we've made before, and it's super pop and and it's lovely uh, just as a jam. But it's also me trying to. Put puns and and subvert this whole thing about how singer songwriters can't do dance music. <laughs> so I like that. Right now, uh, being uh, you've been an independent artist for a long time. Now, what is the one or two things that pandemic has taught you, and uh, how has it affected you as an independent artist? Uh, interesting. Uh, apart from the independent music aside, a lot of things happen in my own life that I think uh, you know were just so 
it was so huge you know my my father was in the hospital my grandfather passed away so many like things happened like so many life occasions happened that you know apart from just and you know the the thing about musicians is that they'll always they'll always try and find a way to reflect it into like what does this mean you know artistically and, yes. and of course that's you know it's it's tough man i don't know what to tell you it's it's like it's hard to to deal with that i know so many people are are going through things that of course there's that one really heavy part of life that you know you have to reconcile with and and then the the second thing was that you know i had all of this time on my hands to reflect you know like everybody else we're just sitting at home and we're just thinking about what does it all mean and some of it is meaningless some of it you can apply i think uh, i tried to use the time to to try and reflect you know on on who i am and and what my art means to to me to other people I, I, the other the other part of it the lighter part of it is that you know i had a lot of time to to spare you know the excuses that we keep making that saying oh you know if i only had so much time i would do so and so things now there were no more excuses so i tried to study a bit uh, you know i've uh, always wanted to study more about art history and and things like that so um yeah i've just i've spent the time the other part of it was the fun part was like uh, i i've always loved like musical theater and broadway and west end and things like that so i started writing musicals and and i wrote one last year called conference call the musical which is like kind of like this <laughs> but it's just like a musical about uh, about being on you know on conference calls the whole time. So yeah, I I tried to I tried my best to man, honestly, I have no idea. <laughs> I hope I've done my best with with all the time that I've been given, but um you have to take uh, you have to take every moment that you that you get. Yep, true, very true. And now uh, Outlast June yeah. 3rd it's set to release. What can people expect from this album and uh, also one message to the people uh, tuning in on radio and uh, watching this particular video on our social media platforms? uh first of all uh everyone at, at radio indigo uh you know thank you so much for for listening all of this time you know like i know you guys play the you know there's a staff as well you guys man you guys have been playing the the tunes for for years now i appreciate that so much and uh i think what people can expect from this album is definitely a an evolution um you know i have to grow if i don't i'm i'm just going to stay in the same place i think people have the tendency in india you know everybody loves like acoustic music and acoustic guitar yeah. is like a big obsession you know and I, i and while you know most of my songs are written on the acoustic i, I just believe that you know because i'm such a big fan of movies and you know cinema and like star wars and stuff i just like to envisage my my own work like it's a big dramatic narrative piece and and i want people to experience that not as just like these singles you know i know people like love singles but i love uh you know being a classicist and listening to albums back to front and then going like oh man that was a whole that was a whole experience uh, i think the message of the album is the same message i'd like to give everyone just generally it's called outlast it's not there for no reason it is about um uh about kind of discarding nostalgia which is um, something that everybody leans on heavily these days and uh, and lo- and just knowing that the best is is yet to come so um that's what i'd like to leave everyone with <laughs> yep absolutely and uh, they just thank you so much for taking uh, you. you know your time and uh, joining us and all the best with your album and uh, you hope so to much. see you soon in bangalore where you're going to be 100%. performing to back to audience i love i love bangalore we've always had a great time so i would love to love to see you guys in the flesh soon sure man they just thank you so much and take that's care so and uh, regards yeah. to your family thank you so much man i appreciate it uh, All right bye bye